What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So layoffs have been absolutely sweeping the video game industry. It's not only the video game industry, it's industries outside of specifically video games. Tech industry and a whole bunch of other industries have just been, it's been like nonstop layoffs, especially over, I want to say like the last three months. It's every week, it's just been layoff after layoff after layoff announcement. Um, and it's, I think it stems from different things depending on, uh, you know, the company and the industry, but a lot of it does seem to be like, um, over hiring from COVID. I think they're still trying to correct that. Uh, these corporations, um, probably thought COVID was going to be, uh, longer than it actually was. And they, you know, they just went very, uh, aggressive with hiring process because they needed to, um, you know, release more content and, and, and make more product uh, because there was a huge demand for it during COVID because everybody was, um, everybody, you know, was home. And uh, I, I think I read an article, I forgot who it was, who it was from, but an analyst said that uh, 2024 is going to be like the, the year of layoffs for people. Um, and so this is just the tip of the iceberg. It, it's it's going to continue to affect the video game industry, specifically like on Weapon Wheel. Just I have I, I usually have a section where it's just for layoff announcements and I just read them off. So this is not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Um, the latest report is Microsoft is laying off 1,900 of its staff from its video game workforce. So I'm just going to read what Phil Spence and this is no surprise to anybody with a brain because they just did a major acquisition. You know the ABK uh, acquisition. So even if this is this has nothing to do with COVID for them or over hiring for them. It could be part of that because they, they did some layoffs last year, um, by the way, right? They had some layoffs last year. Um, but this comes with major acquisitions. When you acquire so much personnel and, 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 uh, and product and property, you're acquiring a lot of things you don't need or don't want. So after company review, that's what they do. They shed the dead weight. They get rid of things um, that they don't need things, people, whatever the case may be that they don't need to cut the fat. Um, so a lot of people, you know, uh, who are, who are pro and I'm not necessarily blaming Microsoft for this. This, this, this just comes with this, right? This is the cost of business. Um, but acquisitions are not all lollipops and rainbows as a lot of people think it is. There's so many people who are like, oh yeah, Microsoft should acquire this and Microsoft should acquire that because they think that's the solution for everything and they're idiots. And it's funny, those are the same people who are so outspoken against, uh, against layoffs. You can't be completely for acquiring everything and then com all, and also completely against like layoffs. They, they are interconnected in some type of way, depending on how much you acquire. You can't be against them totally. You can't be for one and against the other totally. You have to be able, you have to be willing to accept what comes with that. It's not just going to be all, uh, all of a, like a smooth transition. It's not like two happy families just coming together and it's like a perfect puzzle fit. It's not like that usually when it's a huge acquisition. Smaller acquisitions, they can do that because there's not so many assets people that need to come together and all that stuff in the biggest merger and acquisition in gaming history. Yeah, this is going to happen. So you got to be willing to, to come to take what comes with it. Some people don't care. If you don't care, then that's that's cool. Here's what Phil Spencer said. He said, uh, it's been a little over three months since the Activision Blizzard and King and King teams joined Microsoft. As we move forward in 2024, the leader of Microsoft Gaming and Activision Blizzard uh, is committed to aligning on a strategy and an execution path with a sustainable cost structure uh, that will support the whole of our growing business together. We've set priorities, identified areas of overlap, and ensured that we're aligned on the best opportunities for growth. As a part of this process, we made the pain painful decision to reduce our gaming work workforce by approximately 900 roles out of the 22,000 people on our team. So let me just say that I'm surprised it wasn't more. It, it could have easily been more. And it's clear that he didn't just say 22,000 for no reason. He wants to show people, hey, yeah, we're laying off almost 2,000 people, but look at, how look at how big our workforce is. 
So that's he didn't just state that by accident or whoever wrote this for him. That's very intentional because he wants to soften the blow of say, hey, hey, look, yeah, this is a lot of people. But look how many people we have on staff and look how many people we employ. Don't kill us for it, which I'm not necessarily knocking him for that. And I'm not knocking Microsoft for this for this these layoffs. I said this was going to happen when the, when the acquisition happened. Um, I said it in another video. I can't even remember the, which video I said it in. And nobody is exempt from these layoffs. Like I expect, there was, you know, from the leaked document that we saw from Sony uh, or the hack document. Some people, you know, get offended when you call it a, a leak and, and not a hack. Either way, um, expect, I don't think nothing, I wouldn't say it'll be as big from PlayStation or Sony, but I expect some layoffs from, from, uh, from them also. They did some, some minor layoffs last year. Uh, the game... Let me continue. The gaming leadership team and I are committed to navigating this process as thoughtfully as possible. The people who are directly impacted by these reductions have played an important part in the success of Activision Blizzard, Zenimax, and the Xbox team, and they should be proud of everything we accomplished here. Let me skip. This is just nonsense. We will uh, provide our full support to those who are impacted during the transition, include severance benefits informed by, uh, informed by local employment laws. Uh, those whose roles will be impacted will be notified, and we ask that you please treat your departing colleagues with the respect and compassion um, that is consistent with our values. Looking ahead, blah, blah, blah. Although this is a different, uh, difficult moment for our team, I am as confident as ever in your ability to create and nurture the games, stories, and worlds that bring players together. Uh, riveting words from Phil Spencer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so look, I don't talk about my personal life a lot, but I've been laid off before, right? So some people think I'm very cold um, when I say I don't really care when I hear about layoffs. I think I'm just being honest. Um, and I think a lot of the people who act like they're so torn up inside about layoffs in, in, in the industry, the video games industry that we care so much about, I think a lot of people are virtue signaling. When I hear about layoffs, I read it and then I go, go on about my day. I have things to take care about, to take care of in my life. So I'm not necessarily going to spend time crying for a developer or not all of these are probably developers or staff because I have my own things to deal with. And I, and I imagine that's what most people do is you read about it. You go like, oh, that sucks. And then you go on about your day and you forget about it. It's literally something that stays in your mind, your mind for two minutes and you move on. These people are acting like they're crying, they're shedding tears, they're like breaking down. Oh, I can't function. Oh, my mind is just so burdened by the people who got laid off. I can't enjoy gaming. You're full of shit. I think you're honestly full of shit. I don't think most people care that much. You care to the extent, well, to the point where well, you'll, you'll say, oh, hey, man, thoughts and prayers. Hope everybody land on the feet, the, the jack move um, statement. Um, you care to that extent. Do you care to the, to the extent that you're actually going to try to do something about it? Because words don't cost anything. Talk is cheap. Are you actually going to do anything to help these developers? Are you taking the time out of their day? I don't know, send, send them money. Are you going to help them find a new job? Are you doing anything besides just saying some words? Because, if you're, because actions speak way louder than words. So I'm... I'm like man enough to admit, I don't really care about these people because I don't know them. If I got laid off and I, like I said, I have been laid off before, they're not writing me. They're not going to say nothing to me. They don't care. So I don't, and it's not like a, it's not like a, like a harsh thing. I'm not saying it in a harsh way. Like, well, I don't care about these people. It's just the reality, right? I'm not being mean or harsh. It's just the reality, right? Um, so a lot of people virtue signaling, they're just being fake. It's, it's, they're saying it because it's the right thing. They don't, they don't really care. It's 1,900 people laid off, um, Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox employees. Um, also, Mike Yabara is leaving the company. This is, this is interesting because, so uh, Jason Schreier said on Twitter that when he spoke, when he last spoke to Mike Yabara, he, in, he said he intended to stay uh, with the company for the long haul after the acquisition was made. Um, and now, He's announced that he's leaving. Uh, so it's kind of funny. He left micro, uh, Microsoft to go to, um, to, to go to Blizzard 
and then the acquisition happens and now he's leaving Blizzard. So it's like everywhere that Microsoft and Xbox goes, it's like he's running away from them. He leaves everywhere they go. So it, it's something, I don't know, that's, it's, that's, that says something um, that everywhere they go, you run off in the opposite direction to get away from them. Um, uh, Blizzard Chief Design Officer Alan Adam, not familiar with him, he also is leaving the company. Blizzard's previously announced survival game is canceled also. Um, so interesting things. Like I said, look, this is the cost of doing business. This is not me ragging on Microsoft. I knew this was coming. It's just a part of it. Um, it it's a part of them. Yes, they had to grow. They had to get more first party studios and all and, and, and all that stuff. I, I agreed with some of their acquisitions, not all of them. Um, and I more abhor like the fan base who thinks like acquisitions are the solution to everything. It's not. That's I just I just disagree with that, especially when it comes to publishers. And when you speak out against it, oh, you're just mad or, you, oh, pony talk, fanboy talk. Like, no, this, this, this shit has real consequences and real repercussions that they don't see past, right? It's just surface level. It's all like fanboy uh, wars and list wars to them. And it's like, bro, it's, it's much more than that. And like I said, if you don't care, that's fine. You know, right? Because I don't, it's not, I don't care either. Like, like I said, I've been laid off and, but I didn't get on Twitter and announce it to anybody because, and, and cry about it because why, you know, what, what's that going to do? I got laid off and I, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to go find a, find a new job now. And I found an equivalent job in my field, in my career path. I didn't cry about it on Twitter. I didn't, t I didn't announce it. I didn't tell nobody, you know, I, I say this stuff in passing um, when it, when something comes up that connects or relates to it. So it's hard for me. So it's not one of those situations. Oh, you just don't understand what it's like. I know exactly what it's like. And I got over it and I dealt with it and I moved on with life. Like I just don't believe in like crying about something fixes anything. You find the solution, you get to it. All the, yeah, all the people, oh, I can't function. Fakes. They're all, they're all fakes and they're not real people. I think it's much, I think the person who pretends to care is much worse than the person who admits they, they'll tell you straight to, their fa to, to your face, I do not care. The person who's faking about it is a much worse person, in, in my opinion. And be very, very clear about this. Microsoft's severance package is probably going to be amazing. Um, I don't think they've announced it. There was another company that did layoffs recently, and they announced how good this, their severance package was. They're, they have like job assistance to help you find another job. Uh, it's the, 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 the pay is usually three to six months of pay, um, that you get in a lump sum usually. Uh, and it, but that depends on different factors. Sometimes it depends on, um, how long you've been with the company and things like that. So when, when layoffs happen, it's not like you're laid off, get out, get out of our face. Uh, you know, they just, you just leave with nothing. You usually get some, depending on the company, usually get pretty good severance package and, and support. Like I had, um, they're probably going to be like, you know, keep insurance for a few months. Like they're still going to be medically insured for like a few months. They're going to get pay for months. So it's not like they're not going to be getting any money or any like benefits. They're still going to keep, probably keep all their benefits, get all that pay. And then they'll start applying to, to new jobs. So it's not like they're just out on the streets with nothing. Um, and with a lot of them probably have good resumes, um, you know, and, and experience. And uh, even though it's very competitive out there be because there's so many layoffs, I believe most of these people will actually, quote unquote, land on their feet. Um, so they'll I believe that most of them will be OK. And literally, as I'm making this video, I refreshed and a another layoff was announced that I'm not familiar with them. Uh, Rycon Games they laid out laid off about 80 percent of their staff, which is about 60 people. And this report says 25 days into 2024, about 6,000 video game layoffs have been reported. So we're not even in February yet. 6,000 people have been laid off in the video games industry. So it's it's. It's wild out there. Um, video games are my passion, and it's my, my biggest hobby, and I love it. 
I would never want to work in it, though. There is nothing stable about being in the video game industry. I've been talking about it and covering it since 2008. That's when I started my YouTube channel. And one thing I've learned, even though I, I love covering it, I would never want to be an actual part of it. It is the most unstable industry. I guess you could say tech in general sometimes, but video games specifically, oh man, there's nothing stable about it. Unless you're like the, the absolute big wigs at, at, a, at a studio, you, you know, um, top of the chain, top, top of the totem pole. Oh yeah, you can be, they, they'll get you out of here at any time, at any time. Or unless you're one of these, and, and it's funny because we talk about, People talk about Microsoft's money so much. Oh, Microsoft got this much money. Microsoft got that. They're, they're rich, rich. That still doesn't exempt them from cutting fat and getting and doing layoffs and, and getting rid of employees that they don't need. So it shows even the richest of the rich companies still care about saving money. They still care about not wasting resources unnecessarily because I always have this thought and debate with myself, does Microsoft really care about that, right? Or can they just do whatever they want, specifically the Xbox division, because their parent is so rich? Can Xbox just do whatever they want um, and not necessarily perform um, well commercially with their products? And, and, and do they really need to make money like that um, because their daddy, the parent, will always bail them out, will always subsidize, subsidize them, right? I'm, I'm always at odds with that because sometimes I feel like Xbox doesn't really need to make money. But I see things like that and I'm like, oh, well, the parent company still technically cares about making money and not wasting resources. So it's, it's interesting. Um, like I said, it, it makes it clear, even the richest of the richest companies, um, they have, they have goals, they have metrics, they have, uh, standards and they are beholden to the same, the same things that the lesser, that, that the, comp that the poor companies essentially, or I shouldn't say poor companies that the, that the companies who don't make as much money as them are beholden to. It's the same thing. And I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't mention Embracer in this because all Embracer has done since they've made that, that fuck ton of acquisitions, I couldn't even tell you who Embracer owns at this point because they, they, there's so much that they did acquire. Um, and since then, all they did was shut down and lay people off. That's all they've done. Shut down studios, lay people off. And from all the studios they own, what, is, what have they released? Like two mediocre games probably? That that. All that's going to come from Embracer is layoffs, shutdowns, and an assembly line of mediocre games because they don't actually care about the product. It doesn't seem like that to me. I, I think Embracer looks at all their developers and all their staff just as assets to throw some bullshit out there, maybe make some money, which is weird, right? Because if you actually put some passion and quality into those games, those are the ones that would make more money. So it's just weird. So Embracer is just absolutely a piece of shit. And like, I don't know how people look at Embracer and are like, not that Embracer should be the, should be the poster child and the image um, for, what an, for what defines an acquisition because not every, not every publisher is going to be like Embracer. But still, I don't know how you look at them and be like, oh yeah, what the industry needs is more acquisition. And the other point is, I know a lot of people will probably bring up Bobby Kotick and the golden parachute that he gets. It might have been, I think his golden parachute to depart from Activision might have been like 15 plus million, probably more than that, um, which is probably not a, 15 million is probably nothing to Bobby Kotick, who is a very rich person and, C, and former CEO. Um, some people could, might make the argument, if you give Bobby Kotick 15 million just to leave, who's already rich, you could pay that money to these people. Uh, just to keep them on. And I, and I get that argument from a moral purview, but if these people are redundant, if you've done a company review and see these, these people are redundant and there's a whole bunch of overlap, in the long run, it still doesn't make any sense to keep them on anyway. You would have to, or you would want to get rid of them regardless. So I get that argument, 
but business-wise, it doesn't really hold water. And me personally, I do agree that a lot of CEOs and executives get, you can argue that they are overpaid, and I'm not going to disagree with you there, but I think people are kind of reductive and oversimplify what CEOs do because, listen, if, if they're, CEOs are not just walking down the street in, grow, in, in droves, right? Like CEOs are not falling off of trees, good CEOs. That's why they're overpaid because not anybody could just be a CEO, right? If, if, if you could just randomly walk down the street and pick somebody who's going to be a CEO, then that would probably uh, reduce how much they get paid. But because there's not that many qualified people to be in that position and because of all their job responsibilities, that's why they're overpaid. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not f saying they deserve all that money, but I can understand why they're paid that much at the same time, bro. CEOs ain't, you know, they're not falling off of trees. Um, and I, I would say this is kind of the, I would say this is the industry, n nature healing itself. This is the industry auto-correcting because as bad as like layoffs are, it's probably necessary. It's, it's, this is auto-correction. COVID and a lot of things and a lot of events threw things out of whack and caused a lot of employee growth that you could argue shouldn't have happened in the first place. So this is kind of like an auto-correction. Nature is correcting things. Um, so yeah, let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Peace.